Hello, and welcome to Tool Time with the Warren County Library System. My name is Sandy Roberts, and I'm the Makerspace Coordinator for the Warren County Library System. Normally, you'd find me in our beautiful Makerspace at the Southwest Branch, which is right in Stewartsville, New Jersey. But with COVID-19, we're closed. So I figured I'd use this opportunity to maybe share a little bit, little bit about what we have in the Makerspace. So each week at five o'clock on Fridays, I'll be launching a new video that goes over everything from traditional items like the hammers we're gonna talk about today to some of our high tech stuff like digital cutters and 3D printers. That way you'll know what we have available so that when we do open the Makerspace, you can come on in and get creating. Let me tell you a little bit about myself because uh, I may not look like the person you would go to to talk about tools, but I have <laughs> definitely been building for a very long time. My dad always had us be very hands-on, so um, he always had us in the workshop with him, learning and building and creating. My mom was a super crafter, so I learned from her everything from sewing to paper craft to crocheting and knitting. And then I myself got into science and uh, became a science teacher eventually and a STEM educator. I'm also a huge maker. I've been attending maker fairs for years and learning and building my skills. I kind of want to learn to make and do everything. I've got a long bucket list, but <laughs> most of my traditional crafting and building and wood shop and carpentry work, I learned doing theater in high school and college um, and discovered that building sets is a pretty amazing thing to do. I went to Stevens Institute of Technology, which you may not think has a great drama program, but we're a bunch of engineers and we had some of the best sets you could imagine. So I am coming at it from that angle and I hope to learn from all of you what you're looking to learn, where you come to making and where you come to creating. And I wanna to get to know you a little bit better too. So please, anytime you want, reach out to me at sroberts at warrenlib.org. I wanna hear your questions. I'd love to see your suggestions. If you have anything that you want to learn about, I wanna know. Um, all right. Let's get started. Pretty simple stuff today. It's hammer time. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about safety and our tool today. Um, okay, so this is a question asked at the very beginning of Tools and Their Uses, which is available on Hoopla for free. Um, it's written by the Navy and it's all about um, maintaining your tools and knowing how to use them. It's a good read. Um, but they ask, what's the most important tool? And the truth is, it's your hands. You're not going to be able to do much of anything if your hands are injured. So first thing to know about using any tool is that you want to wear the proper protective gear. In the case of a hammer, that may be leather gloves if you're still fairly new at using a hammer. And it's always going to mean eye uh, eye glasses or um, goggles or safety glasses are going to be a good idea. Um, you want to keep alert and focused. You're not chit-chatting, you're not watching TV while you're working with a hammer. That's a really good way to end up injured. You want to practice awareness. You don't want to swing back with your hammer and not realize someone's standing behind you and give them a face full of hammer, okay? You really want to be thoughtful about where you are and be aware of what's happening around you. Um, and you want to follow any safety rules. If you're in the makerspace, we'll go over what those rules are and I'll have you sign a safety waiver. But you may want to kind of set up some ground rules for your own home, especially if you're working with kids or, um, you know, if having a workspace is something new to your home. In general, it's not worth saving a few minutes of time uh, if you're at risk for a permanent injury. It's just not worth doing. So take the time and be safe. Speaking of that, especially with a hammer. Never use a damaged tool. You always want to inspect your hammer, especially the handle. Um, if, if you have a hammer that is not uh, working properly, that is damaged, it's really easy to get injured. Um, and especially the attachment of the handle to the head of the hammer. Um, always use the right tool for the job. A hammer is meant to pound in nails. That's what it does. Don't use it for other things. Um, <laughs> that's a really good way to get injured or to break something, to be completely honest. Goggles and glasses. I know they're not always comfortable, but in the case of working with a hammer, you have a couple things that could happen. You could swing back um, and 
not uh, swing straight and end up with the hammer coming into your face. You don't want that. You don't want that hammer ending up in your eye. Um, the material that you're hammering into, especially if you're working with masonry um, or stone, it can chip and pieces can fly away. And again, you don't want that in ending up into your eye because it can move pretty quickly and can cause some real damage. And lastly, your actual nail can, on occasion, if you miss your, your swing, can fly away. And if that ends up in your eye, you're going to have real damage. So I always recommend when you're using a hammer, hammer to put on a pair of safety goggles. Um, keep your materials in easy reach. You don't want to have to be reaching over your table or under your table um, to get what you need. It's a really good way to end up knocking a hammer and having it land on your foot, which is not a pleasant experience, okay? So just set everything out. Make sure that you're thoughtful about the space you're using. And that said, keep your area neat and organized. I struggle with this. I will be completely honest, but it really helps if you take a second before you get started Make sure you have everything you need that is organized, that everything's clean, that your area is clean, and that you kind of keep it that way as you're working. Don't leave a big mess until a project's done. Keep it neat as you go. Which brings me to the last one, which is maintaining your tools properly. Now, big maintenance on all tools in the makerspace, I'll take care of, but you can help me out by making sure that you return tools clean. Um, if you're using a hammer, make sure that there's no paint or resin or sawdust or um, oil on that hammer. Make sure it's clean so that when the next person gets it, they're getting a safe item to use. All right, let's talk a little bit about actually using your hammer. Um, this is something that you're going to need to practice, okay? It takes a little bit of time and a little bit of patience to get good at using a hammer. But in general, you grasp the hammer near its end. Um, a common mistake when you're getting started is to try and grasp, grasp it real high up, close to the head. That's not what you want to do. Um, you want to grasp it towards the end. Make sure it feels fairly balanced in your arm. It should feel like part of your arm. Um, position your nail and tap it just lightly to get started. In some cases, especially if you're using hardwoods, you may need to pre-drill holes or use a starter. Um, you don't want to have a situation where your nail can't get into and bite that wood and ends up go f goes flying across the room. So you may need to pre-drill, but at least get your nail started. And then you're going to lift your hammer and you're going to swing in an arc from the shoulder. And you want to do that because that, from a physics perspective, you're using your entire arm as a lever. And that is going to do less work and drive that nail in further because you're going to do less work to get more force that way. So you're going to let the hammer do the work, let the gravity pull it down and let that swing do what it needs to do and drive your nail in. You don't want to use a glancing blow. You're not ever coming from the side. You want to hit the nail directly on its head like you could see in this, uh, in this picture over here. Um, and part of that is because you don't want to end up bending your nail or again, sending your nail out of the wood or damaging the material that you're nailing into. That is especially common in soft woods. Um, so it's just you want to really practice trying to hit that nail directly on the head. That's where that phrase comes from. But again, that's going to take some practice. It doesn't always work out for me too, especially when I'm using a new material or a new hammer. Um, and the one other thing I'll mention is, and we'll talk about weights of hammers, use, the, um, use a hammer that feels comfortable. You don't have to use the heaviest hammer to be able to work. Um, you want to use a hammer that is comfortable that you feel you can swing well because a good swing with a lighter hammer is going to accomplish more than a short swing with a heavy hammer. All right, quick note on nails. Nails are measured by the penny, and that's abbreviated as D. Why? I am not sure. I feel like I need to go look this up. It's just something I've kind of accepted. But <laughs> um, they're always sold by the pound. So you can sometimes get them loose and bag them up yourself, but often you're going to buy nails in a box by the pound. Um, nails are sized by how long they are and the gauge of wire that they're made from. So your most common sizes are your 6, 8, 10, and 16. The 8, um, eight penny is about a two and a half inch nail. And that's, that's one of your most common sizes that you're going to use for a lot of carpentry projects. Um, exterior nails are covered in zinc to keep them from rusting. Uh, interior nails may not uh, have that covering. So you need to know what you're planning to use your nails on before you purchase. 
There are four common types of nails. Your multi-purpose flat-headed nail, you're going to use all the time. That's what we stock in the maker space. Your common nail is a little bit thicker than a box nail and it has a little bit um, a little less wide of a head. I find box nails tend to have a little wider, flatter head, maybe a thinner head. Um, 99% of the time, you're going to use a common nail. Okay. <laughs> um, now there are nails with narrow rounded heads and that's so that you can set the nail head all the way into your wood or into your material and then cover over it. Um, a multi-purpose nail, you're always going to have the, the nail head kind of sitting against the wood, but a finishing or a casing nail, casings are a little bit thicker than your finishing nails. They're going to have um, a, a kind of a tiny rounded head that actually can be set into the wood and hidden. So you can like caulk over it or, um, you know, fill in over it and you won't know that that nail is there. Of course, there are tons of different types of uh, specialty nails for decking and all kinds of other projects. If you're not sure what you need, go to your hardware store, talk to the folks there, tell them what you're planning to do, or reach out to me. I've got references and I can help you figure out exactly what you need. Okay. And Here's your actual tool. We're about to look at a bunch of hammers, but I want to go over kind of the basics. The first thing you're always going to check before you use your handle is, or use your hammer, is the handle. Um, handles can be made out of a couple different materials, metal, wood, fiberglass. A wooden handle is economical. It's very comfortable to use. Um, it's a little lighter weight, but it is often prone to cracking if it gets dry. So you never want to leave your uh, hammer sitting out in the sun, for example, if you've got a wooden handle. Um, and so you really want to make sure that you're checking on it. It can break. So especially if you have a wooden handled hammer, you really want to inspect it before you use it. You can also get fiberglass um, handles, which are... Um, a little better at absorbing shock when you're nailing things in. And of course, you can have rubberized grips or foam grips over your handle to make them more comfortable to use. Um, the head of your hammer has lots of different parts that you're probably never going to really refer to other than the curved uh, claw. And you, there are also types that are straight claw, but the claw of the hammer is used to remove nails. So you're going to slide that slit over the nail to the eye um, towards the eye, and then pry up your nail. On the other side of the head, you have the face. And uh, this standard kind of hammer, a claw hammer, has a straight face, but other hammers like ball peens that we'll look at do not have a straight face. Um, so the amount of bevel will um, change based on what you're using your hammer for. And then the other common uh, part that you might hear referred to is the cheek, which is the side of the hammer. And sometimes you can use the side of the hammer um, to start your nails and things like that. So you're always going to want to check your handle. You're going to want to check your head, make sure there's no damage. Make sure that you're using the right hammer for the right job. So why don't we find out what that is? All right, let's talk. Okay, so let's take a look at some actual hammers. We're going to start with probably the most common hammer on the market. This is your curved claw hammer. Okay, and they come in different weights. So this one's pretty lightweight. We've got, this is a, an eight ounce, this is a 16 ounce. They go up to maybe uh, 24 ounce, I think. Um, different types of handles. So this one has your classic hickory wooden handle to it, uh, very comfortable to use. Um, but obviously you can see this one is starting to get a little bit of, a little bit of damage there. Okay, so this could crack and you always wanna inspect the head on top, make sure that that's all okay. Um, this one needs a bit of cleaning and a bit of maintenance, but it's it's still a perfectly usable hammer. It's lightweight, so it can do some basic, um, you know, carpentry stuff. Uh, the claw here is used to pry nails like that. Um, so this is your basic carpentry hammer. This one has a fiberglass base and a nice rubberized grip to it. These are what we um, commonly use in the maker space. This one is, like I said, a 16 ounce, so it's not super heavy. Um, pretty much anyone can swing this hammer pretty easily. You're gonna, again, it's nice. It's got a sealed um, top to the head there. And this, uh, this fiberglass is set really nicely. So it's, this is a nice, comfortable hammer to use. Um, and this one's relatively new. You can tell it's still even got the label on it. This <laughs> is actually one of my kids' hammers. It's got a metal um, 
handle. So it, I will admit that when you're using it over a length of time, especially if you're using it for a larger project, you're going to feel that reverb through your hand. And it's not the super comfortable thing in the world. The wooden hammer I find is more comfortable for the same weight, basically. These are basically the same weight um, hammer. But this one has got a really nice rubberized grip. It's a little smaller, which makes it a little more comfortable sometimes for people that are just starting out. And I'll often grab this one if I'm doing just a lightweight project. Um, so there are also straight claw hammers. These kind of hammers are used for general carpentry. You can, these are the most common hammers on the market. You can use them for just about anything. Straight um, claw hammers, which I don't happen to have, are often used for framing and really bigger carpentry projects because the straight claw gives you a little bit more pry action to remove larger nails. Um, so it's really a matter of what you plan to use. But again, we keep these in the makerspace. We always have a bunch on hand of different weights because they're the most common hammer that you're going to use. And it's really a matter of preference what you prefer as far as a handle. I do like working with a wooden handle personally, um, but it's a, it's a preference. Okay. Another very common, um, hammer you're going to find. This is a tack hammer. So this is lightweight. This one's uh, five ounces, I think. It's very lightweight. Um, sometimes they'll have a dual head. Sometimes like this one has a place where you can kind of pull a hook or nail. These are typically used for finishing work. So you're putting up molding or you're putting up a picture frame in the house. And the nice thing about this is that because they're lightweight, because they're smaller, there's less chance of damaging your sheetrock, okay, or damaging your molding. Um, so they're really great for those kind of lightweight projects. The other thing is if you're, you know, putting up molding, if you've ever put up crown molding in a large enough room, your arm is going to get tired reaching up there into the ceiling. So a lighter weight hammer is going to just allow you to go longer without uh, wasting energy. Um, so I like keeping a tack hammer like this around. It's just really useful for all those kinds of more decorative projects. And I mean, they're not expensive. And again, usually a wooden handle for these, you know, cause you're, they're pretty lightweight and you don't want too much uh, reverb on that when you're doing that. Okay, mallets. Mallets are our next ones and they come in lots of different types. Mallets are always used when you don't want to take any chance of damaging what you're working on. So you can use these a lot if you're um, joining wood, for example. Um, I use these, I use this one actually when I'm doing leather stamping, okay, because you want, these all have a little bit of give to them. So they're not a metal head. Like this is a rubber head here, a wooden head. This one has two different heads. So one is softer than the other. So you have a little bit of variability, but all mallets have a flat face. But they're not a metal head. So they're a little softer, a little more forgiving. And that's always going to be used for a project where you, you actually kind of want to reduce the amount of drive. Um, and again, that's usually when you're doing something that's decorative, you don't want to mar your wood. Like say you're joining two pieces that have been glued together and you're going to kind of whack them in. That's the perfect place for a rubber mallet. Okay. We use these a lot for leather working in the makerspace. All right. Now we're talking about some of our metal working, um, hammers. This is a ball peen hammer. So it's got its straight face. Okay. It's got your classic metal head, but it's got a rounded side, a rounded head over here. Okay. And you notice no claw on this. Um, this is meant to shape metal. Um, so depending on the thickness of the metal and the type of metal you're using in your application, that's going to decide the weight. This is a 24 ounce. It's kind of mid range. Um, they are going to have a generally a heavy head to them. They're steel because it's metal against metal, but these are used for shaping, um, metal work. Uh, and they're really, really useful for that, but they're a little more specialty. So we do have this one in the makerspace. Uh, if you want to try your hand at that. Um, and of course the nice thing is if you think you might use, use it for metalworking, but you also want something that you might be able to use for carpentry, you can use that straight face on, on your standard nail too. Okay. You just want to keep that in good order. So that's your ball peen hammer there. And again, you're gonna have your choice of handles. This one is your basic wooden handle. Speaking of metalworking, oh, this big guy. Now this is a blacksmith's um, hammer. It's got two faces. So it's got your flat straight face and then it has a wedge over here. 
This would also be used for metalworking and for shaping metal. It's hefty. I don't even have any idea at this point what the weight is on this, but it is, it's probably a good 36 ounces, I'm thinking, something along those lines. Um, so this is a pretty heavy duty tool. Now, if this had the same flat face over here, we would call that a maul. Okay, if it was a smaller handle like this, a wooden handle, and you could tell this one, by the way, is not something I would be using anymore, because you can see it's got some damage to the, the handle. So this is purely at this point for just, it looks cool and I use it for costumes. Um, but if it had two straight faces, that would be called a maul. It's kind of like a mini sledgehammer. And then of course, if it was a big um, head with a long, it would have a much longer handle, the a handle length of your arm. Um, I didn't bring my sledgehammer in. It's quite heavy. They are often up to four pounds. Um, actually, no, they can go up to 12 pounds. I think mine is a four pound. Um, it's a relatively small sledgehammer. But sledges are meant for like really heavy duty work. You're setting, um, you know, you're setting fence posts, things like that. Um, so they're mostly going to be used for outdoor and the point of having that really long, long handle. And you can see here, this is a pretty long handle is to really give you the arc when you swing, because remember you want the hammer to do the work. So the more arc you can give it to that swing, gravity is going to take over. The hammer is going to do the work and you're going to get a lot of force without having to put as much energy in yourself. So that's why sledgehammers have those long handles. And that's why blacksmithing hammers and malls have long handles too. So that's what this is. Um, again, unless you're doing heavy duty metal work, unless you're learning blacksmithing and I encourage you to do so, or um, you're setting stakes or fence posts, you're not going to need something with that heavy a head. And this is the last one. It's not technically a hammer, um, but this is a hatchet style hammer. Um, this is great for camping. And this one is, is not great anymore. This is kind of my retired one because it needs some cleanup, but it's got your straight face hammer head on one side and then your axe face on the other side, a wedge for uh, as an axe on the other side. And you keep this sharpened, you can pound in your stakes for camping and cut up kindling. Now this is not gonna substitute as an axe, okay? But for small projects, it's really handy to have around. Um, and I actually keep one of these in my car all the time, just as a just in case kind of a thing. Um, it's even got a little spot there that you can pry a nail or whatever if you need to. So this is great for camping. I always have um, one of my camping gear and I, I often keep one in my car too, just in case. Um, you never know when you're gonna be picnicking or wanna make a campfire. So those are our basics. All right. I hope that you enjoyed that. I hope that you learned something new. And if not, at least you got some enjoyment out of seeing what we offer through our makerspace. Again, if you have any ideas or topics that you want to see covered, my email address is sroberts at warrenlib.org. I'd love to hear from you. Um, I'm hoping to keep these tool times going even after the Makerspace opens. But remember, that Makerspace is there for you. It's free. It's open to the public. We want you to come in and invent and make and create and, and just use that space uh, for everything from quilting to carpentry, um, from 3D printing to coding. So it's here for you and uh, we really want you to be a part of that space. All right, I will be back again next Friday at 5 p.m. with another tool time. Uh, until then, my name is Sandy Roberts. I'm the Makerspace Coordinator for the Warren County Library System. Stay safe, stay healthy, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Take care.